Welcome to this show. This is This Week in Jackson County Schools. I'm Pamela Stone, and this week we are visiting Rosalie Elementary, which what I found out is actually K through 8th grade, so it's elementary, a little bit of middle school as well. A little bit of both. And next to me, I have the principal, Mr. Bill Shelton. Welcome, Mr. Shelton. Thank you. We're glad you're here. So, tell me a little bit about your background. You're the principal, but what yes. have you done in the past? Where's your you know background coming from? Okay. Uh, I started out in elementary education. Uh, I started out actually teaching at Rosalie. I taught there for 13 years and taught a little bit of everything from PE to second grade, okay. fifth and sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade, science. Science. So, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then, so you went straight from there to the principal or did you kind of go on your way up? I actually um, transferred over to Pisgah High School, okay. which we're a feeder school for. That's a big difference. And, yeah, it is. <laughs> big difference. Uh, I taught middle school science there for two years okay. and then I became assistant principal. Over and there. was there for five years before I got to come home to Rosalie. Okay, so you're 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 up there in the years you've been serving as a, as a teacher. Yes, almost. This is my twenty third year. I'm so counting it really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. All right. Well, so tell us what we're going to talk about today. So, you've been here how many years at the actual elementary as a principal? This is my third. Third year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so what are we looking for? Uh, so I wanted to talk about mainly some of the things that. Um, is maybe unique to our school or oh, yeah. to a few schools in the county. So it makes your school yeah. special. Uh, one thing that I'm really proud of right now uh, is the fact that all of our students in our school get a free breakfast and free lunch every day. Wow. Uh, that's something that not all schools are eligible for and for us we've got a lot of families that don't qualify for free or reduced okay. but they still are in a situation where financially they struggle to have to pay for those lunches and those breakfasts every day. So it's, it's really good for those families. How did you get that program or what do you have to do to get uh, It's a countywide program. Uh, it's actually called the Community Eligibility Program. Okay. There's uh, seven schools in Jackson County that qualify for that. Okay. And it's, it's basic, it's kind of based on um, something they call SNAP, uh, but it's uh, based on different things uh, that come together as a final type of score and if you meet that percentage as a school then regardless of how you might have met that as an individual family you are lumped together as one big group okay. and so you don't have to pay is that every year you guys have to do re, re, redo it or renew it's, it's, it or whatever yes it's renewed every year this is it we're in our second year of it right now okay so it does change throughout it could it, yes it could okay well that's good i'll bet that is super helpful too oh very yes and it probably makes it easier on the lunch ladies because they don't have to keep asking for that's money. true yeah the line moves a lot smoother and a lot <laughs> sure faster now does. i'm sure it does all right well that sounds like a really good program i hope you get it next year when's the deadline i mean is there a deadline it'll be during the summer during that they'll the summer? go okay. check it again all right sounds yes. good okay and so you were what i were talking before the show that you're working on technology in the school yes okay um, so what are we doing there well you know, technology is expensive, and, uh, it, and, yeah. it, and a lot of times, even though it's needed and helpful, it gets put on the back burner. you got to pay the bills yes. first. Right. So, um, But we've been fortunate enough to be signed up in a program with DeKalb Jackson Water Supply. Okay. Um, there are, I think, six different schools, including us, that are part of this program, and it benefits us uh, by taking $2.00 from each monthly bill from right. anyone who signs up and that's divvied out in between all the schools and up, we've had it for about a year and a half from the time we got our first check and we've already received almost six thousand dollars just just wow. from people being signed up for that program you know there's nothing to it and they can sign up for that program with a yes they have to be a customer okay. of that water company or the new gas company that's coming across the mountain okay that starts in bryant and it's made its way all the way into pisgah so how do they sign up just so that people who are listening know i mean do you know they just they call the company call and company. they request to be uh, signed up on that program okay well that's really helpful it's, and, it's real simple and i don't think too many people know that schools don't get most of their funding i mean i think they think schools get most of their funding from the state we don't right. we don't i mean we get you know our electricity and some of those other things but a lot of it even a lot of our electricity and other things and technology and computers and basketballs and all of that has to come from outside sources true. Very and, and true. usually it's us as the school constantly asking 
for hope. Yeah, and so. without that funding, you know, we wouldn't be able to replace the projectors or Promethean boards, and that those are things that teachers have become dependent on. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's their new way of teaching. Well, I think my, their classes. So. My my Promethean board lives on all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really does. I'm just constantly using it. So. Well, good. Um, and so, what's what are you going to buy next in your technology? Uh, we you are plants. We're we're looking into um, some things. We actually had our eighth grade travel to Pisgah the other day to uh, a STEM day that they sponsored for the feeder schools. Okay. And there is a, a new technology called Z Space that they they have purchased at the high school level, and it basically uh, is a computer screen, but it's three D. Okay. And you can manipulate models, and and it's like engineering do, models, yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes. Okay. And I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you can do with it that that seem to be hands on, right? Because it's it's a more virtual reality type thing. I was just saying. And you know, things like that. That's that's the future, and our kids need to be exposed well, to sure those things. I'm sure that's not cheap either. Oh no. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not cheap. No. Do you guys do engineering? You guys are just so you don't really go up to middle, the end of middle school. Do you have any engineering, like where you have to do any 3D modeling or anything? Because that's really expensive too. So right, we don't change. currently have any of that. We're actually um, my my fifth through eighth grade science teacher uh, is uh, currently doing some extra Amstai training. And we're looking at getting a more in-depth robotics started up, okay? Because that that's becoming something that um, middle schools are getting more involved in, and actually going to competitions. Oh, they are. Yeah. So that that's a new, and it would be a new opportunity to for those kids that don't play basketball right. or not in beta club, you know, something for them to feel involved in part of the school. Well, and I think just being a teacher myself, I think it stems. Um, or it sparks their interest in, I guess, school, period. Yeah. I mean, you it know. It gives them a reason to want to be there. It does. I mean, it's the exciting part. They get to be hands-on. You know, I remember the day, and you probably did too, and we'd sit there and just listen to lectures yeah. and papers, and we just had to take notes and notes. And although notes are important, they're still boring sometimes, <laughs> you know. So if you add some extra things with it, it makes it a little more exciting. Exactly. So I would have loved to have built one of those robots when yeah. I was a kid. I didn't get to, but <laughs> that would have been really good. Okay, so then the other thing we were talking about, you have a very large Native American population, you were telling yes. me, which is that I found that very interesting. I didn't know that. So you get a special program for that. Yes. Um, based on our percentages, uh, we're at right at 25% uh of our student Maybe population awesome. that is lot. classified as Native American. So what's your student population? 186. 186. So that's quite a bit. Yeah. So um, because of those numbers, uh, two days a week we have an extra instructional unit uh, teacher that comes in and she is able to work with groups of students that are in that Native American population that may be struggling in math or reading okay. uh, to give them that extra one-on-one -on -one that they need. Well, that's really nice. I'm sure that's helpful. Oh, it's very helpful. I mean, that's, you know, we don't have, at a school our size, we don't have extra anybody yeah. <laughs> to do those extra things. Right. I mean, we've got our basic units, and uh, having her come in makes a huge difference in some of those kids' abilities to, to be successful. So, and she comes, does she come from other schools, or is she just... just... Uh, this year, she's actually uh, at Pisgah High School three days a week, and at Rosalie two days a week. Okay. Well, that's good. And did she do the same thing there? She does. That's really neat. I, I didn't know you had such a large population there. Okay, and then um, we have somebody else. We have a couple other teachers here. They're going to talk about yes. some sports. Yes, right? basketball. Basketball. And then a new math program. Yes, we have a, a new math program that's countywide. It's K through 5, but we're doing it all the way at K through 8 at Rosalie just to be consistent with our, with the way we approach math. And uh, I have my fourth grade teacher with me. She uh, she's started this Eureka Math. She's learning it along with the students, right. but uh, she's really jumped in on it. She she studies at night. She watches the videos at night so that she can be best prepared. So she's gonna take a nap on the show. Yeah, she's gonna be tired. That's a lot of work. It's just a brand new way of thinking about math, well, and it, you know, it's really difficult. 
and for I'll the kids. just you know I'm not a math teacher, but I'm a business teacher, and I teach a lot of math in my classes. You know, just like real life stuff. You bought something, and the kids all just instantly. Most of them are like, I hate math. That's the first thing out of the math. You don't even have to. It could be the easiest thing. So I think it's important that we get that thinking out of kids' heads that exactly. math is not evil. And it's not bad, but it's never going to go away either. Right. It's a it's, necessary it, thing. It is, life. and everything you do as an adult yes. requires math. So I think that's really important. So, And going all the way to eighth grade, it's consistent. Oh, yeah. So I think it's a good program. I think you're doing good. Thank you. All right. So, and, and so we were talking about making money and how much we need to, extra money we need to make as schools in general. So you guys just recently had a fundraiser. We did. We had a, a candy bar fundraiser. Those are always really popular with the kids. What kind of candy bars? I mean, just out of curiosity. Uh, it's, the brand is Cherrydale, but the reason people love them is because it has a Jack's coupon that they uh -huh. get to use oh, like after the they, yes. Um, so our, we recently completed that and uh, we made between 35 and 4,000. That's a lot of money. Yes, and uh, the winner gets a $300 shopping spree on Amazon. That's a lot too. So. <laughs> Do you know who won what grade or have you announced it yet? Oh, we, we, yeah, we announced okay, it. Okay, so who? It's J.J. Corbett. He's in first grade. So first grade. He won last year as well. Really? He's a go-getter. He, he's my best salesman. Really? <laughs> so we know what he'll do as a living, right? Yeah. That'll make it good. All right, and so what are you going to do with that money? I mean, do you have it already kind of eared well, out or something? Well, as I mentioned, that Z-Space, that That's very expensive Z-Space, uh, is it just a program that goes on the computers, or is it an actual... It's an actual... Screen, like, um, green screen? It's, it's its own setup. Okay. And it's you know it's got the special software that built into it, but it okay. looks like a regular screen until you activate it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to try our best by the end of the year to combine part of these funds with the other technology funds that we're getting from the DeKalb Jackson uh, okay. funding to end up with one of those e-spaces. Okay. Is it a special computer you put in a corner and the kids rotate through it? Yes. Okay. So not all of them will have their own special. No. Okay. Just making sure. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> I don't believe you. And it's hard. And again, parents, if you're listening, you know, I know we're always as teachers and schools knocking on doors that we need money, but, you know, we do. I mean, all schools, and it's so helpful. So if you can, like, I'm sure the little first grader had help from parents, and oh, yeah. and those parents take him to their friends and family. And But it's so important because really in the end, it's just helping our kids get a better education yes. in, in the long run. So, well, thanks for coming on today. Thank you for I having us. I really appreciate anything I missed. Uh, no, I think that's about everything I was going to mention. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, thanks for coming on, and we're going to talk to a couple other teachers here in a little bit, but all thanks right. for coming on. All I appreciate right, thank it. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. When it comes to appliances, all roads lead to Eider, Alabama at the Appliance and Outdoor Equipment Showroom at the Upper Sand Mountain Gas District. Stoves, refrigerators, freezers, dishwashers, washer and dryer sets, hot water heaters, and tankless water heaters from major name brands including General Electric, Crosley, Hearthright, Empire, Real Fire, Buck Stove, Heat Star, Renai, and American. Plus, we're the home of the camouflage refrigerators and freezers. For the winter season, we have a complete line of wall heaters, gas logs, and complete decorative fireplace units all available in natural gas and propane 90 days same as cash financing available and special financing is available to upper sand mountain gas and water district customers and remember we service what we sell at the appliance and outdoor equipment showroom at the upper sand mountain gas district come see us today at the appliance and outdoor equipment showroom at the upper sand mountain gas district highway 117 in Eider, alabama the appliance and outdoor equipment showroom at the upper sand mountain gas district this is Roscoe Pete Coltrane. <laughs> Owen and all points bulletin on Cupper Gallery and Kimbo. See, they must be up to something. Their, their trucks are all over. You just got very suspicious activity. Ooh, I love it, I love it. Possum on a gunbush ship. Uh, Gary and all them just good old boys have a big sale, and they deliver free of charge. Venus, you dipstick. There's no way they're delivering that much furniture. You just, their trucks are everywhere. It's because of their great prices and service, Chef. They have catnap and recliners for $269, new queen mattress. Sets $299, King Size Mattress Sets $399, Memory Foam Pillars $19.99, Queen Size Chair Slave Beds $299, Lift Chairs and Adjustable Beds also on sale. Venus, will you hush? 
I heard all that. I love it, I love it. Check out Comfort Gallery Mattress. And they having a big sale. They offer free delivery and set up. Six months, same as cash. Ooh, free one-year layaway and even a no-credit check payment plan. I love it, I love it. They're open seven days a week and accept most major credit cards. Good. Georgia Northwestern Technical College is now accepting applications for classes. We offer programs in business, health, industrial, and public service at six campus locations with financial aid options as well. Take day, evening, or online classes to get your degree, diploma, or certificate. Apply now. Drop by one of our campuses today or check us out at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Get focused. Get hired. All right, if you're just not joining us, we are here with um, talking to Rosalie Elementary this week, and this is week in Jackson County Schools. And so next to me, we have a new guest this week. Uh, this is Stephanie Wagner. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank and you, you are the school counselor at Rosalie Elementary, but which is really like elementary and middle or junior high? Yes, yes, we're okay. K to 8. All right. So, and you're the school counselor. I'm guessing in such a small school, you're the only counselor. Yes. That requires an extra lot of work. That means you have to touch <laughs> all 186 kids regularly. <laughs> and actually, I'm split between two schools. Oh, wow. I'm split between Rosalie and Flat Rock. So I get two days at one school and two days at the other, and then we just kind of, I have a flex day, so when I'm needed at one or the other, I get to go there. That's got to so, be crazy hard. How do you get to all those kids? Uh, it's a challenge, but it's fun. I mean, I love my job. So you're really good with names. Because that um, means you've got to know all 186 that <laughs> rose. I'm just thinking names. And how many are at the other one? We have about 140 at the so other one. So we're talking like three, almost 400 kids' names? Mm -hmm. Do you know them all? I wish I did. Okay. I know their little faces. <laughs> I've done that going down the road. I had them last year, and I'm like, hey, girl, how you doing? I can't necessarily remember their name, but... So I understand that. So tell us a little bit about your background, where you came from, what, what you've been doing, like teaching-wise and stuff. Oh, I'd love to. Um, I actually uh, uh, taught math and computer at a private school in Georgia for okay. six years. Okay. And then I um, got my master's degree in professional counseling. Thought I kind of wanted to go that way, but I really, really missed the school setting and missed the kids. So I have a... Um, uh, second master's in administration and I combined that for school counseling and um, I've been doing this for I'm in my 11th year now just for school counseling, counseling school counseling mm -hmm. wow that's a lot so and yeah and, and is it all where where have you been all in Rosalie Elementary and well it's all been K to 8 okay but I started out at Woodville and Skyline okay and did my first three years there okay. and then the rest of the time I've been at Rosalie and Flat Rock so most of it's been so, there mm -hmm. yeah do you flip between the how many days you get at each one of those schools, or has it been pretty much consistent? I, I have two days that I'm assigned at each school, okay. and then I, then my fifth day is just kind of you know if I if I've got some issues over here, I go there, and if okay. I you know, so it's kind of a catch up day. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tell us a little bit about the things. So one of the things you and I were talking about before the show was that you guys are working this year on transitions which you said is like when you're getting the eighth graders ready to go to the high school yes okay so tell us what's going on with that um there's actually several different uh transitions that take place like um our kids have when they come into kindergarten they have the opportunity to uh, come early to see the classroom right. meet the teachers um just you know because that's a big transition not only for the kids but mom and dad too you know sometimes oh, yeah. it's hard for them to let go. Let go and go. Nice way of saying it. <laughs> so, Let go. But they so so we do a little bit of transition there and then when the kids get to fourth and fifth grade, uh it's either fifth or sixth, I can't remember. Um they get to actually experience lockers. And so they transition from having one classroom teacher to four classroom teachers. That's a lot. And, yes, and getting to use the lockers and having uh -huh. that experience. And, and unlock them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then um, our eighth graders, they actually get to do uh, probably a little bit more than the others because their transition is really the biggest of all because they're going from a 
small 186 kids of K to 8 to right. a big high school. Right. <laughs> with, how, how many are in the high know, school? Do you know? Uh, I think it's around 600, so between 550 and 600. Yeah. So, um, one of the things we do is we have a dinner. We do like a hot dog dinner at the high school and the uh, the principals and the counselors go and the high school counselor really gets a chance to talk to the parents and talk about the expectations in the classes. When do you and start this? I mean, like, have they already had the dinner? Um, or is it yes, later? yes. No, they actually, we start the process from the very beginning of the year okay. so that the kids have an opportunity to little by little move into the high school um but now we have some like uh, there are some sports that we don't offer at our k-8 to school that the high school does so seventh and eighth graders have an opportunity to participate in, in like school, right? yes like okay. in cross, cross country football but then we have basketball at our school and then the high school has golfing and some of those other things and so, the seventh and eighth grade can do it yes do they just go under the jv the jv team yes I'm guessing? yes okay so they get to do that and then we have the hot dog dinner for the parents and um later in the year well and like mr shelton was telling you about the stem activity where they got to go over and do the the science and right, the, mm -hmm. um then then later in the year we have an opportunity where they go to the the eighth grades go to the high school and they spend the day and they get a chance to uh, actually do their schedules for the next year. So that's got to be toward the very end when the schedules mm -hmm. are made. Usually in spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get a chance to walk around the school, see the school, actually watch high school students changing classroom in the hallways. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, I can. You know, and, um, and so they eat lunch there and um, just different activities. So, have any of them come back and went? I don't want to go. <laughs> I do have a few yeah. that say that, but then after they get over there, it's kind of like, well, oh yeah, why don't you get not over so there? bad? Yeah, yeah, after a couple of days, you know, it's not it's not bad, but mm -hmm. it's good. So you really guys are starting like doing a little bit all year long. Yeah. So it's not just like one day of transitions or two days of transition. Here you go. It's yes. So do a lot of this the dinner is it over at the high school so the kids get to be at the high school at that point yes okay yes um a little bit during the year they go to the high school it gets actually gets them on the campus so they have you know it's it gets okay. a little more familiar well, that's good so, yeah right. but they only get a visit once like during a school day and that was toward the end of the yes day. towards yes okay all right, good. All right, so then we were talking also, you have what's called the four areas of, like you have a counseling program, and you have four yes. areas that the counseling program, you as the counselor, since you're the yes. counselor, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is a good thing, but so right. you have four areas that you focus on. So what are those four areas? Um, the What's different for a K-8 to counselor versus a high school counselor is in our school setting, we have four middle school teachers. So the students don't have a whole lot of electives. It's kind of just straight, you know, this teacher does English, this one does history, this one does, and you rotate around in between them. And that's all of the grades, or is that just predominantly the elementary and then the middle school section? Just does? the middle school section, okay. yes. Um, so my role as a counselor is a little different. I get a lot more of the beginning stages. I sort of lay the foundation stones. Okay. So when they get to middle school and high school, then the, the high school counselor can focus more on the end of the education time. Right. Right. <laughs> but we the four areas that, that we cover is called behavioral, social, personal, academic, and then career. Okay. So uh, with my sixth to eighth graders, we look at the Alabama Career Education, or it's a program called Cooter. And the kids love that name. I, I get all kinds of jokes about that name. But they. <laughs> Not from that show, the. Uh, the mechanic on. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's That's actually. That's what I thought, but. <laughs> it's actually a very neat program. They, um, they get to go in, they'll take surveys, um, they'll do career, like career interests. So it's basically a career program. Yes. Okay. Yes. And at, at, at the different age levels, they have different. 
um, requirements, interests, yes, and things like that. And so, what we're able to do is is we're able to take the report from that and then sort of mix it with what they're actually interested in so by the time they get to high school right. they have a little bit better idea of whether or not they want to go the technical route or the the college route or whether they want to mix them or you know just kind of so do you make do you spend that time with each individual student going through that program um, usually it's a class at a time okay and we have a career coach that travels around okay. and and they come in and help sometimes oh that's good so. uh and do they do it on the computer? Just... Yes. Yes. Okay. It's all on the computer. All right. Well, we have something similar to that here in Georgia. Yeah. So, um, and then besides those, I mean, what do you do for like all the other areas? So that would take career, but what about like the personal and some of Social the other, what do you do for those? Um, I do uh, 30 minute classes every week with each grade. Okay. And uh, we have a program that's called Too Good for Drugs. Okay. And that goes along with um, just the regular basic uh, character wheels, like uh, responsibility, right. kindness, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the Too Good for Drugs is a very proactive program okay. where it, um, it, it, it teaches the kids about drugs. But not only that, it teaches them how to um, avoid them gives them alternative reactions to it you know helps them really to not be so surprised by it right you know so the interest doesn't peak because it's like ooh, something new exactly okay exactly and it, and it gives them it gives them self-confidence to be able to to move Say on no. to something else yeah right so yeah. did you do you have to i mean do you do that as like a program did you have to get trained or somebody else come in um it's actually a workbook that we work through okay and so there's and like you do a, that mm -hmm. have you had a special mm -hmm. training in that area um there was a, a a little bit of training that we did when we first adopted the program okay. but it is pretty much the same um, yeah yeah do you ever bring so. anybody in a special guest on that um I have sometimes, well, I, we have a, a week that we do called Red Ribbon Week. Right. It's the National Drug Awareness Week. Yeah. And, and sort of coupled with that, what we do is uh, we have the drug dogs, the drug task force come in. We have the fire department come in. And um, so they're my, they're my special visitors. <laughs> okay. They're so special. They're so special. Well, so have you seen a difference? How many years have you been doing? I've been doing this. This is my 11th year. For this particular program? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and do you see where, like, especially like the career thing, is that state mandated? Um, it, it is now. It okay. is. It's part of the Alabama curriculum now. Okay. But do you uh, see a difference? Do you see kids like in eighth grade going, hey, I know what I want to be. I mean, and they're pretty sure. It, it's funny that you mentioned that because one of my students that has graduated and gone on is a waitress. And she stopped me at the restaurant the other night and she said, thank you so much for doing that with me because now I have an idea of where I want to go and what do I want to do. Good. So, <laughs> yes, I, it is making a difference. <laughs> That's good. Well, I think kids, you know, like when we were kids, I was, or at least me, I was never taught to think about what I wanted to be. I mean, you you know, you're like, I want to be, you know, a superstar or a movie actress or, but nothing serious like, okay, you really have to decide what you want to be. So yeah. getting out of high school, I was still not sure what I wanted to be, mm -hmm. you know, and I did some schooling and eventually got this path. But, yeah, you know, I would have loved it had somebody you know start this a lot earlier and then i would have gone oh you know and yeah. realized things i liked things i didn't like things that if i liked it but didn't want to do it you know i mean there's a lot right. of things that go on with that career thing yes thinking, I'm thinking and then that helps make decisions on social who you hang out with what clubs you do and it kind of ties that whole thing together yes so they're more of a complete more like of a, a complete person yes to yeah me, that's what it's all about yeah so. all right well we're time's up, but I appreciate everything you did. That sounds really good. You got yeah. it going. Hey, I love it. I love it. Well, well I'm sure the kids are really glad that you're there. Cause, <laughs> I mean, all of the stuff that you've just talked about sounds like it's really good. Thank you. So, all right. Well, thanks for coming on. We'll be right back.
The Dade County School System continues to put the safety of students first. That's why the Love the Bus Elementary campaign rolls on. Love the Bus is designed to teach students the importance of safety, respect, and proper bus etiquette as we continue to enhance efforts of safety for our students. We'd like to have you as part of our team. If you're considering a career as a bus driver, call the Dade County Schools Transportation Department at 706-657-7053 today. Part-time hours with full-time benefits as a bus driver for the Dade County School System. Dobbins Supermarket, serving the community for over 70 years with fresh cut meats and a full line of grocery items. Dobbins Supermarket, Highway 71 in Higdon. This week at Dobbins Supermarket in Higdon, find boneless pork ribs, four of them, just $3. Fresh boneless chicken thighs, $1.99 a pound. Oscar Meyer hot dogs, pound pack, two for only $3. Little Smokies, two for $5. And breaded hot wings, $1.99 a pound. These are other exciting specials when you shop every week at Dobbins. And don't forget the sausage at Dobbins. College is more than an education. It's a bridge to your future. Plan your future. Envision your future. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Come on in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Bama Side. Enjoy a family atmosphere with good home cooking, including burgers, steaks, fish, plate lunches, and more at Bama Side. Top it all off with a homemade banana split or other delicious dessert. At Bama Side, watch your favorite games on the big screen, especially those SEC rivalries. Open Tuesday through Saturday until 8.30 Eastern. Open till 3 Eastern on Sunday and closed on Monday. Dash says, dash on in to Bama Side. 632-3436 for Bama Side. Alabama Highway 75, just on the Bama Side. Side. Get that next new-to-you vehicle from Rayburn Cloud at Cloud Auto Sales in Higdon, Alabama. Check out an 05 Nissan Frontier 4x4 V6 with power windows, locks, and crews, just 6700 How about an 06 Ford F-150 Lariat Super Crew 4-wheel drive, just 12995 Or a 13 Hyundai Sonata, great gas mileage and new tires, only 7995 Cloud Auto Sales now offering warranties on all vehicles. Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon, 597-3273, and on Facebook at Cloud Auto Sales. Come see me for your best deal in a good used car. And yes, I'm still fishing. Just two big old boys Full of biscuits and charm Beats all you ever saw Been making us laugh Ain't doing no harm Making us laugh The only way they know how that's just a little more fun than the law should allow. If you picture Rick and Bubba University as a campus, uh, we have students graduating cap and gown with their degree in common sense. I thought this was in. You thought he thought it was in. They were halfway. Here's some water. You're halfway. You know what you thought of? Okay. This, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to get on my face before the Lord. I pray that he, he he shows mercy and he blesses this country like he has in the past. I'll meet you sometime now. Oh, Welcome back this week. We are this week in Jackson County Schools. I'm Pamela Stone, and we have been interviewing people from Rosalie Elementary School, which I have found out is not just elementary school. It's actually K through 8th grade, so it includes their middle school. So if you're just now joining us, so we've talked to the principal, Mr. Shelton, and we've talked about a lot of things that are going on, really good programs, just finished fundraising, and they're trying to increase their technology fund. Uh, and I just got done talking to the counselor, and we've learned a lot of good stuff about our counseling program and how they uh, interact the career stuff with it. And next to me, I have two more teachers. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having Thanks. us. All right, so I just want to make sure I get this right. I don't want to say you are Shantae Starkey. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you are Simone Wilburn. Yes. Okay, good. So, Shantae um, Starkey, uh, you are a special ed teacher. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your background, what else you've done, how long you've been teaching. Okay, this is my fourth year okay. teaching special ed. Um, it is my second year at Rosalie. I've taught at another Jackson County school before here. Um, and that's about it. I have 21 students, wonderful students. Yay. Um, it's one of the most rewarding jobs, in my opinion. So, so what age do you have? I have K through 8. So you have K mm -hmm. through 8. I do. Do, you, do they come to the classroom at the same time? Um, some of them do. Okay. I, I'm more as a resource teacher, but I also have um, some students who are self-contained in the room with us almost all day. Okay. 
So is that hard to coordinate, like, different age groups and different, I would assume it's... Sometimes it's challenging, but definitely worth it. So. Okay. Well, good. All right. And Ms. Uh, Wilburn, mm -hmm. and you are a PE teacher slash math, then I found out, science and history, yes. and it sounds like you've done it all? Yes. Do you really have certifications <laughs> in all those areas? Yes, I do. Wow. So which one's your favorite? That's my first question. Uh, well, um, for a while, math was my favorite, and then I was pulled out and, and I taught physical education and I really like the physical Do education you? yes I've played sports most of my life so I've really what was your favorite sport basketball was it mm -hmm. thus <laughs> she's the assistant basketball coach yes. so there you go mm -hmm. all right so um so tell us a little bit about basketball first let's talk about basketball okay I am the assistant coach and Jeffrey Moore is our head coach okay. at Rosalie. Uh, we have seventh and eighth grade girls and boys. Okay. And do you have two teams? Like, do you have because it's seventh and eighth? Do you have no, a, they all it's seventh just, and eighth grade combined just one, okay. on both teams. Yes. And how often do you practice every day? Oh, we practice every day. We we play two times a week. Sometimes we're going to be playing three three nights a week, but we practice every day after school. Have you had any games yet? Yes. Okay, yes. so what's your rating? Um, well, I'm not exactly sure. Our girls have won, you know, quite a few. Our boys are struggling a little bit, but we're doing better now with the boys. But um, we're working. We're working hard every well, day. Well, and I th think people don't think about it, but it's harder when you're in elementary school. When you're in high school, you get those kids you know ninth grade year right. and most of the time you're going to get them for four years so by the time they get to their junior and senior year you've molded them and got them where you want them and right. they've learned all these skills right you you might have some eighth graders but you just had them for one short season and then right. they're already done you know they're heading out like one more season and they're gone so right. you don't get all those years to teach them like you would right. now so. we do have a, a rec ball league that's um, part of the community. It's not oh, part of the good. school, but it's part of the community. It's recreational. I'm sure a lot of the kids still play mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. and do you teach on there? I mean, do you coach? I did. I, I did for um, from third third to sixth grade with my boys, and um, I have four boys, but um, and, and they all play basketball, so we're a basketball. <laughs> no girls. No girls. Wow. Okay. But we we are a basketball family, and and that's something that helps with our uh, basketball program is that we do have and our head coach. Um, is part of the recreational basketball too. He, oh, yes. he is over it. Oh, that's so that good. helps lead up into the school ball. Well, it does. And then the kids kind of know what to expect if you're if yes. you coached in the same way. Right. Yes. Did you play sports? Yes, I played volleyball. Volleyball. Mm -hmm. Okay. I tried basketball once mm -hmm. in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, I was really good at it, except for I forgot to dribble down the court because uh -oh. I got so excited to get to the other side oh, yes. to get it in the, the hoop. So, that. yeah, that was my biggest problem, so I finally had to quit. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's talk about you have a club. Yes. Okay, so tell us, and your club is called the Junior Civitan Club. Did I say that right? Yes, ma'am, you did. Okay, now, I've been teaching a long time. This is my 16th year, and I've never heard about this club. So I'm really <laughs> interested. You briefly told me, but give us a lot of good details about it. Okay, it is a volunteer organization. We have 52 members, okay. and that is 5th through 8th grade. Okay, that's a lot for 5th through 8th yes, grade. Yes, it's the I majority. I mean, in a school that only has, what, like 186 kids? Yes. That's a lot, okay. It is the majority of our 5th through 8th grade. Um you, you do not have to have any you, it's not like beta you don't have to have good grades to get in you just okay. have to have a want to help others that that's my only requirement um of, of course i want them to be respectful and to responsible be responsible and... yes um but we do a lot of different community service projects um for rosalie and then sometimes we try to go out into jackson county and then we have something coming up nationally that we're going to also do with physical education so tell so. us about it so what so uh mm -hmm. high school has something that's similar it's called the key club where they just do a lot of community service i do the fbla at the middle okay. school and we do two community mm -hmm. service projects pretty much faithfully each year right. So what do you what do you guys specifically get ready to do? We have tried to do something every month. Every month? Yes. Oh no, I twice a year. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Twice a year is a lot, but every month. We just finished up something that we call Socktober for the month of October. Oh, that's a cool name. Where we have um, collected socks to give to the homeless. That Can is I steal locally. Your ideas? Yes, uh -huh. anytime. Oh, <laughs> They're hard to find so many after it you've is. done so many. It gets I mean, you kind of really go, okay. 
I've done this, I've done that. What else do you guys want to do? The kids need something new and something exciting. Yes. (laughs) Um, We're about to start a canned food drive we're doing um, for November, and we are going to give the canned food items to a local church. So, you know, what we collect is going to go back to our community. Right. That's important. So we're, we're excited about it, that. Yes, it important. is. It I is. think it's important. I, I, whenever I do, I usually don't want to make it go, you know, unless I'm purposely picking one that goes out Bad. outside of the community. And then what's your one you're going to do with her? It's the Jump Rope for Heart. Okay. And we're going to help each other. And it's for the American Heart Association. And it helps um, raise money for kids that have special hearts. And okay. that the kids will go out and raise the money and, and bring it back. And then, of course, we turn it into the American Heart Association. Is it kind of like that math thing with St. Jude and the kids do so many it's math very similar. Yes. Yes. It's very similar. Okay. Yes. very similar to that. Yes. So, and who counts the jump ropes? You? Ah, uh, yes. And I may get some of the junior civitan. Yes. There you go. Yes, they would love <laughs> that's to do that. That's got to be a lot. If, if a lot, I mean, yes. you've got 186 kids. If half of those do this, mm-hmm. you're going to be counting a lot. Yes. yes. That's that's a lot. Definitely. Helpers. Okay, and do they just take the sheet home? Mm-hmm. And when are you going to be doing this? It's in February. Okay, so parents, you hear that. So it February, start saving February. your money because goodness knows money goes away after Christmas, right? Yes. <laughs> so save money now so that when your kids come and they want you to sponsor them, you have a little bit of money to help that. That's good. Plus, it promotes a healthy lifestyle. Yes, yes. it does. It teaches them healthy heart skills. Which I think is so important because when I was a kid, it wasn't about healthy, just did right. whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I got to be 20, and it's like, oh, <laughs> you mean my body doesn't get to do whatever it wants when I'm an adult? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that anymore. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's a really good program. And you guys are going to tie it in together. So are yes. your kids, like, doing something for the program or the, the fundraiser itself? Well, they're, like she said, they're going to be helping her, but they, they're also going to understand that, you know, this is giving back to other kids who have these heart problems heart issues and so it's just more of the giving back when does your club meet we meet every uh every tuesday every tuesday yes and like during a resource block we we have a resource block where other clubs can okay so it's like club day or whatever yes yes okay all right and then um so How's class going? I hear you have a new math program. Yes, it is called okay. Eureka Math. All right. It is um, a new math program that Jackson County, This it's a wide, uh, throughout the county, we're all doing it. And it's, I think it's K through five, but at Rosalie we're doing K through eight. And it's different. I taught math for several years, a different program. And this is a, it's a different program, but it's, it's good. It's good. It's a and good change. And you're the one that's learning at home and needs I to take a nap, right? I am learning. I did, earlier. I told um, Mr. Shelton, I said, I have to watch the videos at night. And sometimes I even watch them again in the mornings while I'm eating breakfast. Just to make sure Just you're to make sure right. that I have, you know, the concept that I need, you know, to know to teach them and because to I'm explain sure it to them. Because I'm sure it's math, regular math, but it's just done in a different it's way. It's done in a different way. And it's and done in a better way actually. Do you think yes. so? Mm-hmm. It, it ties it to real world, you know, it's a real work, real world connections. Um, I like it because the students are engaged during the, the lesson and they're just not listening to me talk for 30 minutes. Right. They are, and they're working in groups is and they get to help each other. Or is it? Well, I do it in the classroom, but there is programs on the computer that does that go along with it it's called okay. that's something that we do it's called zern and it reviews the lessons that i've already taught okay. and, and it and it's on the computer and the kids you know they love the videos and the computers right. and they interact with it very well they like that program a lot because you know like i was telling him the first thing kids do is i hate math i mean literally they did they, yes, sh- they don't even that. listen if you say most of them if you say the word math mm-hmm. it's math. No. oh my gosh i hate math and right. i'm like wait a minute you're never going to get rid of it right, right. you have to buy a house you have it. to buy a car you have to buy groceries how are you going to do any of this if you don't know anything about math right i mean it's i don't know i i guess that's the business person in me but it's such a big deal for it math is. to it be is. And they're thinking and how we can change their mindset on mm-hmm. math, that it's not bad mm-hmm. and it's not going away. Mm-hmm. I think this program will change the way they think about math. Because it, it has, it's actually helped me, you know, change my mindset. On, I was on not good things. at math when I was younger. That's, I talked about I, that with her earlier. I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't. Good. In high school, sometimes I struggled with my math. But well, I think this program will help them. You know, as they move on to each grade level. Still not good at geometry. We don't want to talk about that. So. <laughs> anyway, it's a good thing I don't build houses. We're going to take a break, ladies. We'll be right okay. back. We'll finish talking. Okay? okay. We'll be right back.
At First Southern State Bank, putting you first is our priority. First with convenience, with branches in six great communities, Fort Payne, Rainsville, Scottsboro, Higdon, and our Stevenson office now recently enlarged and remodeled. First with our friendly, experienced staff, always helpful and ready to serve. And first with our mobile on-the-go banking. Our mobile app is fantastic, user-friendly, secure, and free. So whether it's online or in person, you're our first priority at First Southern State Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Innovation and quality. Two things you don't normally hear about in a recruitment ad, but you'll hear a lot about innovation and quality when you join the team at Vanguard National Trailer. Vanguard is an industry leader in the production of dry van trailers and composite plate trailers. And right now, Vanguard National Trailer is hiring energetic and hardworking team members to be assemblers and welders, as well as industrial maintenance for first shift openings. And you'll work a full 40-hour week in four days, which means three-day weekends. And overtime is available. Working at Vanguard National National Trailer has other great benefits too, like paid holidays, paid vacation, medical, dental, vision, and life insurance, plus a 401k plan. Full-time work, three-day weekends, available overtime, and great benefits. That's Vanguard National Trailer. Fill out your application today. Vanguard National Trailer is an equal opportunity employer. Applying person today. Starting pay, 10 to $14 an hour, depending on position. Vanguard National Trailer Corporation. Highway 11 North, turn beside the Premier Healthcare Center on Vanguard Drive. Hello, I'm Ben Cagle. Don't miss Downbeat, the best of the 1960s, Saturdays, 1 o'clock, on the Big Jet Fly. Paul Firebomb, you tell it like it is. This is the SEC. Yeah. SEC. SEC. Well, they ought to just play one more line, but whoever wins, the other team just have to get out. Don't even play football in the SEC no more. You realize Alabama lost to Auburn last year, don't you? Oh, yeah. That, I laid in bed two days after that. After that the night. Paul Feinbaum Show, weekday afternoons 3 to 7 on News Radio 1420 and 106.1 FM KWN and Chattanooga's News Talk 97.7 KWN. A memorial marker is a reflection of the way you share your love for a family member who's gone on. It should help celebrate their life. At Heartfelt Memorials, we dedicate all markers to honor and express the love you have for your family members. We can help create a memorial marker to express that love or even add death dates to already existing markers. For all your granite marker needs, call Heartfelt Memorials at 423-227-8658. That's 423-227-8658 for Heartfelt Memorials, helping you honor your loved ones. Serving the entire tri-state area from Trenton. All right, Mr. King, how do you know the defendant? You much prettier in person, to be honest with you, pretty. Sir, we are not in the club right. or a bar. Right. Talk right. about your case. Right. If you lie to me, you will lose. If you try to perpetrate a fraud on this court, you will be held accountable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do not interrupt while I'm ruling. I'm gonna rule your oh, yeah. Judge Faith Rules. Back-to-back episodes every morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central on KWN-TV. Folks around these parts have put their trust in the Ponder name for filling their prescriptions for decades. Jennifer Ponder Hicks, doctor of pharmacy, continues the tradition of fast, friendly, and personal service at Ponder's Mountain Pharmacy. Ponder's Mountain Pharmacy is convenient to our customers. Between Dobbins and North Sand Mountain School, next to Northeast Alabama Health Services, Ponder's Mountain Pharmacy gladly accepts most insurance plans, including Alabama Medicaid. When the need arises, have your doctor phone Ponder's Mountain Pharmacy at 597-4020. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, Ponder's Mountain Pharmacy. Thank you for joining us, America. Joseph is in Florence, Alabama. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Joseph. Thanks for joining us, America. Samantha's with us in Seattle. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Samantha. Angie's with us in Baltimore. Hi, Angie. How are you? Thanks for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Allie is with us in Austin, Texas. Hey, Allie. How are you? The radio home of the Dave Ramsey Show. Weekday afternoons at 1 o'clock Eastern on 1420 AM and 106.1 FM KWN. 
All right, welcome back to this week's in Jackson County Schools. I'm Pamela Stone, and we've been talking to Rosalie Elementary. And if you're just now joining us, we have talked to the principal, Mr. Shelton, and he has given us a lot of great information and stuff that's been going on. Then we talked to Ms. Wagner, who is the school counselor, and she talked about transitions from eighth grade uh, to get them ready to go to high school. And they do that all year. In the school I'm at, we just do it pretty much once a year and one time a year. But they, you guys do it all year long um, and do little things throughout the year. She also does a whole area of counseling. Um, she does some career stuff, getting the kids ready for careers, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you ladies would think that's super important too, getting them <coughs> thinking. Um, and then they do a program called Too Good for Drugs where they try to make sure that they understand there are other alternatives to drugs. Are you guys just finished Red Ribbon Week? Did you guys dress up? Of course. Mm -hmm. That's always yes. good. Always <laughs> a lot of fun. We did too at my school. And um, so and just to, to remind everybody who's next to me, this is Miss Starkey, and she is a special ed teacher, and you have all kinds of kids. Yes. All different <laughs> ages. And this is a K through eight school if you're just not joining us. And then uh, this is Miss Wilburn, and she does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. She does PE, <laughs> math, science, and history. Um, and you do all of them in fourth grade? Uh, yes. I, well, I teach math, history, and science in fourth grade, and then I, we have a librarian. She does the library for half a day, and then she teaches language arts for, for the fourth grade, the second half of the day, while I teach BE. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and then we've talked about basketball. Mm -hmm. You're the assistant basketball coach, yes. and you guys have a lot going on in basketball. You, yes, we're busy, busy, busy. Yep. A lot of practice, <laughs> doing good. You got mm -hmm. some good players. Yeah. Excited we about. Got good kids. Yeah. That's one thing about Rosalie. We have very good kids. We're very blessed. Mm -hmm. That is good. And you have 186 members, or uh, not members, but you know, students, students yes. I guess they're still members, but <laughs> students there. All right, and you guys are coming up on a fundraiser in February, which I know it seems like far away, but can you believe it's, it's already November? It flies by. I mean, I was thinking today, oh my gosh, we're at four months gone, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, and it's called Jump Rope for the Heart. Heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's a fundraiser to help... That's to, um, kids that have special hearts, right. special needs for, for their heart. Okay, and also to promote a good, healthy lifestyle. And yes. your yes. club, which is called, I don't want to get it wrong, <laughs> Junior Civitan. Yes, ma'am. Did you come up with that name, or is that a club? No, it's an inter inter international. It is? Name. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you guys are going to do something for Thanksgiving. You're going to collect canned foods. Yes, and we also have a um, Veterans Day program that we host oh, coming up. Do? Um, we invite any of the local veterans okay. to come to um, our school, and our whole student body puts on a program. We sing songs. Uh, we do a drama. This year, we have three eighth graders who are actually going to perform a song with mm -hmm. musical instruments and singing. Wow. So we're really proud of them for practicing. And Nerves! Yes. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I could do that. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> so that's great. So, and then we were talking about during the break that the librarian... Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of like does the other part, like you were saying, for your classes. She does language arts. But um, she was really proud of some. What was her statistics? Her she was library. proud of. She is the um, second highest, li or the our school is the second highest in the county. We have the greatest number of books circulated, and um, it, even with our low, you know, lower enrollment right. in our school, we we think that's a big deal. That is a big deal. That <laughs> and means she does a really, really super job. She's an excellent librarian. So that means, like, just for those of you who don't know what that. That means, that means a lot of kids are checking out books and reading. Yes. We have some and good she, readers. <laughs> yes, and she is big on encouraging them yes, to read. To be, is she? Yes, and she does a contest, or she has them to bring in box tops, Okay. and they bring those in, and it helps to buy books for the library, and she has done a really good, super job doing that. She has contests and tries to get them to bring in, you know, the most, the, box, the tops. most bo box tops, and then she gives them, like, a prize for oh, that, whatever. and the kids love that. Well, that's good. Good. Um, and, and there's something else just people need to know. Those books just don't come from government money. No. At all. I mean, I like we were talking earlier, I think people think that schools are just 100% funded. Very mm -hmm. little of our funding comes from the government. Right. It comes, Most of it comes from outside sources, fundraisers, parents helping, yes. PTOs that put on money. Without that, we don't have... 
you don't have basketballs Mm -mm. i mean we don't i mean Mm -mm. it's just amazing what we don't have so it's really important and thus i mean you don't have to have any money for your club but your club helps the community in turn to do it too so it's really a big deal so you're doing something your club's doing something for christmas as well yes um we did this last year and it was a huge success um we go to a local nursing home and we sing Christmas carols, um, make goodie bags to give to them. Um, it usually has lotion, socks, just things that they need. Where do you get the money for this? Usually, we have some local churches that donate okay. the items, okay. some of the items, and then um, our kids, parents, the parent involvement. Again, you know, they're really good about bringing st- things in. Um, sometimes it comes out of pocket, you know, out of our pockets. Um, but our kids get a, a good. Um, understanding of what it feels like you, you know to go and see these um people that stay at these nursing homes because they understand sometimes we're the only people they get to see mm-hmm. right? you know and it, it means it means a lot oh my gosh i've done that with fbla with my kids a couple of times and they just they love them mm-hmm. yes the the residents they of the nursing homes the kids it is in. just the most special moment when they've got some kids in that mm-hmm. right. Place. right that is so cool so mm-hmm. all right you had, we're going to talk about the advocacy program yes okay so tell me about that okay so it is a countywide program okay. um this program was developed from student surveys okay um countywide our students felt like not only did we not know their name but we didn't know who they were and what they were about and what they like to do and I guess that does come from sometimes I'm guilty of seeing a student out in the hallway and even though I know their name I'll say hey sweetie or hey buddy you know but to these kids it means a lot when we say their name they feel important right and um it's been extremely beneficial for our kids um academics for their attendance um for feeling like they are part of a family Mm -hmm. That's good. So um, what we do is we meet every other Wednesday. Okay. Our um, students are grouped by grade levels, not necessarily all fourth grade in one group, but maybe second, third, and fourth in one group um, with a different teacher other than their own. And um, And their classroom size, like 25 or 30 or whatever? It's about 10 to 15 in each group. Oh, it's really small. Yes, so you can get to know them better. Okay. (laughs) And every month is a different theme. So this month is giving back. So, which ties into my club, uh, the Junior Civic Tan Club. Right. And, um, like, our K-1, through one, they are going to show appreciation to our staff members, our faculty members. They're going to make posters and goodie bags um, for our lunchroom workers, our um, custodian, and just, you know, realize that they do a lot for us, you know, and we want to get back to them. So, again, we hear goodie bags, yes. which requires money and donations to parents. Yeah. You know where to come look Please. at now. <laughs> it's very, very hard. Um, that sounds really good, and I'm sure the kids think it's the coolest thing. They do, and they enjoy giving back. Yes, they do. I think they, they do. They feel important. Mm-hmm. So, there was one time I had a student, and I knew who the student was, and I called them, and they're like, do you remember me? And I said yes, and said their name, and they were like, I can't believe you remember me. Right. So, right. it does kind of go it's like with that. Deal. I mean, I think they don't think we remember them after we've had them. Or, right. Right. So, do you think, have you already seen a difference in the kids? Do they feel like... I I feel like they do. Do Yes, I do. And, you know, even students I don't have who are in the lower grades, they'll come up and hug and, you know, Mm -hmm. hey, Miss Starkey. And, you know, it just, it makes you feel good and you know that you're making them feel good. Right. They feel like a family. Elementary school is so cool. I love yes. it. They're so the little ones. Yes. They give hugs and they think you're just cool. They can make a oh, bad yeah. day wonderful. Yes. <laughs> and then they get to eighth grade and they're good still, but that's not the same. They're not yeah. the same ones. They're different than kindergarten. Yeah, they're not quite, you know, hey. So, well, you guys have everything. I mean, I can't say that you have everything done right and you're doing good and, um, I wish you the best in fo- or football, the best in basketball. <laughs> right. Thank you. That sounds really good. And um, and you said you play how many games? Uh, we play two games a week. We're starting to. For how many weeks, though? Oh, we're, we, we end our season in December, like the second week of December. We're hosting the Jackson County Tournament at Rosalie this year. So about six or school. eight weeks, yes. I would guess. Yes. That's, so let's say it's six times this 12. That's a lot. That's a lot. For, I mean, and they're practicing. <laughs> for, right? Yes, it's yes. a lot for seventh and eighth graders. I was going to say, so these kids yes. are like, 
they go to school all day and then they, they practice, practice two all hours day. after my school. Student, we were talking about that with my students and some of my mm-hmm. students are in it and they're saying, but still, I don't even get home till seven o'clock at night. Right. I'm tired. I don't want to do any homework. Right. Because some of them were supposed to do some homework. That's how we right. got on that subject. Yes. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to do any homework. It is a big deal. Yeah, they put a lot of time into it. It, it is. So, all right. Well, I thank you so very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. And uh, I wish you the best of luck this year and everything you're going to do. And maybe you can just slow down and just teach two curriculum. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. That's a lot maybe. of preps. I don't think people understand how much prep yeah, that is. Yeah, it is a lot. That is a lot. That means you got to prep, test, mm-hmm. I mean, all I that stuff. I teach K through 8. Oh, yeah, physical that, education oh so. that's yeah. a lot so <laughs> it's fun though i like it well thank you for coming on ladies <laughs> thank you for having me all right thanks and this is this week's in jackson county schools we'll be here next week thank you